research on improving the reliability of visual question answering uh, models. In this work, we address the challenge of uh, uh, reliability in the VQA models, and we aim to obtain not only accurate, but also reliable and trustworthy models. So in this talk, I'm going to give a brief introduction to visual question answering problem and uh, introduce you to the problem of reliability and the calibration in uh, general and in VQA systems and uh, present our proposed method for addressing this issue and show you some results and wrap up. So VQA, it's a subfield of the multimodal AI and specifically vision language models that combine computer vision and natural language pro uh, processing in order to combine visual and linguistic information. Uh, so the problem is that given an image, uh, some image and a question in a natural language form, the VQA system is supposed to provide an answer to the question considering the image. So in this image of a dog and a horse, uh, when the question is how many animals in the picture, the VQA system is supposed to provide the answer to, which the open-ended natural language form of the inputs uh, question and the answer uh, helps the system to do more uh, human-like uh, functions than like traditional computer vision tasks such as image classification, image segmentation, and etc. So this, these are some more examples of this task. Answering these questions might be so trivial for a human, but it's not as trivial for the machines because the questions are in open-ended form and uh, it can ask from anything in the image. Uh, for example, how many animals there, what type of animals you see, what distinct type of animals you see, is this a daytime, nighttime, and etc. So the type of the question that can be asked here is unbounded. So uh, some real world applications of the visual question answering uh, problem is, uh, for example, it can be used as an accessibility tool for visually impaired people. For example, they can take a picture of a scene that they do not see or uh, do not see properly and uh, ask questions in order to perceive their environment. For example, this image on the left here, it's taken from a data set uh, named VizWiz, and that's a data set of the VQA task images and the questions and answer that are collected by visually impaired people. So it has a specific uh, uh, challenge associated to that, that the images might not be very well uh, quality. Um, on the right hand side, you can see an image taken from a medical uh, VQA domain where the images are related to the medical domain and questions are asked from, you can ask questions uh, from the images and obtain answer. And it's been, it, it's been used in the medical domain uh, to assist radiologists and doctors. It can also be uh, used in educational setting. Uh, it has been studied uh, for, as an educational tool uh, for preschoolers in order to aid with uh, visual learning. It's another application of it is as an interactive tool in the egocentric AI uh, setting, where imagine you have a wearable camera, you perceive the world around you in an uh, augmented reality uh, case, and you can ask interactive questions and obtain uh, uh, your answer from the, uh, the world around you. So the research in the VQA domain uh, they, the research addressed different uh, problems associated with the VQA uh, domain. For example, some research uh, addressed the problem of bias. Uh, if your data set, uh, which is oftentimes happen, has, a, has bias, you, this bias will be transferred to your models. For example, 
if all the images of bananas uh, are yellow in your data set, then an ans a model may easily answer to this question of what color is the banana with this red banana uh, by yellow without looking at an image. And that's called a linguistic bias. Other research uh, consider the issue of answer consistency, which means basically the answer to related questions must be consistent with each other. For example, given this image of a person skiing on snow, if the answer to question is there is snow in this photo is yes, then it should also answer winter to the question of is it summer or winter? That's called answer consistency. And also some research consider integration of external knowledge, because you might not be able to answer a question by just looking at an image. For example, when was this uh, airplane uh, invented? You, you need to refer to external knowledge in order to answer this question, but you also need to perceive what is in the image and uh, what you need to refer to in order to uh, obtain an answer. And research, uh, the current researchers uh, consider uh, integrating either implicit data databases such as Wikipedia and Google search or explicit knowledge bases such as uh, large language models. Uh, the uh, problem of robustness is uh, a little bit more diverse. And uh, from that, we can mention uh, ensuring robustness uh, against the uh, linguistic uh, paraphrases. For example, if you paraphrase the question, the answer to that should not change. But that is not what happens uh, often in the models. But in this uh, work, we address this issue of reliability, which means how you can ensure that you can be, uh, you can trust the answer provided VQA answers. Because they often make mistakes and they may provide inaccurate answers. For example, looking at this image where the question is what is not edible in this photo, which an obvious answer is flowers. But the model, a VQA model, provides an answer vegetables, which is clearly inaccurate. And this inaccuracies can happen often. Uh, like even the best uh, uh, state-of-the-art models, BQA models, uh, those that are pre-trained on millions of data, hundreds of millions of data, uh, they provide accuracy of uh, about 80-something percent. So they make often mistake. And these inaccuracies can happen due to right of reasons. For example, the data you're testing the system with might have a different distribution uh, than the data you have trained with. For example, if you train your model on all zebra images, then you cannot uh, uh, expect your model to uh, recognize a dog. Or as I mentioned before, uh, the inaccuracies might happen due to uh, presence of a data bias or the bias in the model. Another common reason is that simply the question you ask might be ambiguous or very complex that a model uh, is not equipped to answer. For example, again, this image from the visually impaired uh, 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 data set, where the image is not clear, you cannot, even a uh, human cannot answer the question from this image. Uh, or it can provide inaccurate answer because uh, the answering the question requires accessing a uh, uh, accessing and reasoning uh, from an external knowledge, such as this uh, example. When did snowboarding <clears throat> become an Olympic sport? Or another common reason, uh, common to all neural network models, is that your model may, might be overfitting to the training data, so it cannot uh, generalize well to the test data. So these inaccuracies happen, but the implications of these inaccuracies is that we do not know when we can trust the answer provided by a VQA model. And that actually limits its applicability in uh, some real world uh, applications, such as uh, critical domains, such as medical, 
where uh, a decision made based on an inaccurate answer uh, might have uh, very bad uh, consequences that we do not want. Uh, so, and that's not all. Uh, neural networks are equipped to provide not only the answer, but also the probability uh, associated with the answer. Uh, that is the softmax probability of the uh, provided answer. And uh, we often observe that not only models are in incorrect, inaccurate, but also they provide a very high confidence for their inaccurate answer. For example, in the left-hand side image, uh, the answer provided for this uh, question of what company is displayed in the background, the actual, the grand truth answer is Budweiser, but the model has mistaked it with Coca-Cola and that's expected because that looks like uh, a Coca-Cola sign. But the problem is that the confidence is provided for such inaccurate answers is really high. So it would be better if we can uh, adjust the model such that it can provide a high confidence for correct answers and low confidence for inaccurate answers. For example, if you provide this wrong answer with a lower confidence of 0 0.03, then that's a desirable case that we uh, want to achieve. And that is uh, the definition of a calibrated model. A calibrated model is uh, a model that the predicted confidences or the probabilities accurately reflect the uh, actual likelihood of the correctness of that answer. Um, and it's uh, measured with uh, uh, commonly with the metric of expected calibration error. Forget about the math. It's calculated by, uh, let's say you have thousand image question pairs and for that you obtain thousand answers and confidences per each answer. You, uh, in order to calculate the expected error, you need to split the interval of zero to one into some uh, number, let's say 10, and then put every confidence in its associated uh, bin. And then instead of calculating uh, the average uh, accuracy on all the answers, calculate the average accuracy in each, in each bin separately, and then uh, uh, compare it with the average confidence of the corresponding bin. For example, uh, here uh, we observe a case, a perfect calibrated model, which uh, doesn't happen in uh, practice, where in each bin, the average accuracy is aligned with the confidence. So when the model, uh, model is more often correct in high confidences than the low confidences. But this doesn't happen in practice. We I either observe an overconfidence issue or underconfidence issue. In the middle, uh, so these uh, figures are called, called reliability diagrams. In the middle reliability diagram, we observe an overconfident case where at each confidence bin, the confidence, average confidence is lower than its actual, uh, uh, the average confidence is higher than its actual accuracy, which is called an overconfidence issue. And on the left and on the right hand side, reliability diagram, we observe that in each uh, uh, confidence bin, the model is not as confident as it should be. It, it provides a lower confidence than its actual accuracy. And we aim at providing, uh, at developing um, methods such that its uh, expected calibration error is more towards this perfect calibration. So that on average, this uh, EC metric is closer to zero. But this EC metric doesn't uh, uh, distinguish between the underconfident case and overconfident case. Uh, and since over, uh, Overconfidence is a more major issue compared to underconfidence. We also aim at reducing the overconfidence, which is the average confidence among the incorrect answers.
So one way to uh, uh, to improve the reliability of the VQA systems is to uh, employ a mechanism called abstention or selective prediction. So imagine you have a VQA system, you provide it with an image, input image and question, and the model provides an answer and a confidence between zero and one associated with that answer. An abstention mechanism would decide whether to provide an answer or not based on thresholding the confidence. So that if you, uh, if the confidence threshold tau is a higher uh, value, then the model would abstain more frequently and uh, would provide more answers otherwise. And, uh, but this is not all. Uh, by only employing abstention me mechanism, the model can be reliable enough because uh, because we would want to optimize this, uh, abstain on wrong answers, but provide answer for the correct answer. So in order to that, the confidence is provided by <clears throat> this VQA model must be calibrated so that uh, the model abstains on low confidence incorrect answers, but provides answer to high confidence uh, and correct answers. And this abstention is usually uh, uh, measured by uh, two metrics, risk and coverage. For every, whatever uh, threshold that you set for this system, it's going to answer some proportion of the questions, which is called coverage for that specific threshold and the risk associated with answering those questions. That means the error but the uh, error that ha uh, that occurred on answering only the answered questions, not abstained ones. And by varying this, uh, conf uh, this uh, confidence threshold tau, you can obtain different risk and coverage values, which is uh, a, a risk coverage diagram. That is, if you set the uh, tau to high values, then you will obtain lower coverage and hopefully lower risk. And as you increase the uh, threshold, then your model would uh, provide, uh, will cover more questions and also uh, do more uh, errors. And we want this, uh, we, uh, what we uh, want ideally to obtain is that for, a, for specific risk uh, that we want our model to, uh, make to answer more questions for that risk. That, that means for a specific risk, we want to cover more questions. So here is an uh, example of an ideal case. In the first row, we see a VQA model that answer incorrectly to the provided question. And in such cases, we want uh, the reliable model to abstain from answering this question. Say, but basically that means that I the answer I don't know. And in the bottom row, we see an image that uh, for image and question for which the model provides actually an, a, a correct answer. So in this case, we want the reliable VK model to provide the correct answer. Um, so in this work, we observed that VQA models are actually poorly cal calibrated. In this diagram, we uh, the reliability diagram of a VQA model with accuracy 65.6% is uh, shown, and it achieves EC, the average confidence error, calibration error of 0 0.15, which is a high calibration error and the model is overconfident. And this uh, poor calibration and overconfidence can happen due to different reasons. For example, one, uh, one reason is overparameterization, where the recent models are really overparameterized and large. So uh, that could cause to overfitting to data. 
And another reason is that the BQI models are actually trained in order to optimize for accuracy. So they do not uh, consider the, this calibration when uh, they are trained. So it's really expected for them to uh, be poorly calibrated. One existing uh, calibration technique in the literature is this uh, selector, which, form, uh, which formalize this reliable VQA as a selective prediction problem and uh, trained a multi-layer perceptron component on top of a freeze uh, frozen VQA model uh, that is trained to predict a single value, a confidence score such that, uh, 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 and uh, it's trained in a way that this confidence score is uh, uh, is equal to the actual uh, VQA accuracy on that answer. Uh, in this top, uh, in this bottom reliability diagram, we observe the calibration, the reliability diagram of this selector model on the same VQA model on top. And we observe that its overconfidence is uh, uh, lowered a little bit, and its calibration error has lowered from 0 0.15 to 0 0.11, but it's, it's still considered poorly calibrated. And another problem with this method is that it relies, training of this additional component relies on uh, uh, having additional held out data set that is different from the training data set, which can be challenging, uh, especially in this uh, vision language tasks. Uh, having annotated data is uh, more difficult in this task. So the aim, our aim in this work is to improve the reliability of visual, uh, visual question answering models through calibrating the models. And it doesn't only uh, help with reliability, but also if you have a well-calibrated model, it, it improves the trustworthiness. You, based on the confidence of answer, you can, uh, uh, you can decide whether you want to trust the answer or not. And with a calibrated model, you can uh, employ a more reliable abstention mechanism such that the model can decide uh, not to answer the question and abstain, abstain on, that, on that. And uh, you can, uh, and the questioning, uh, the question answering can be referred to a human expert or to external mechanisms such as uh, verifying the answer based on the provided calibrated confidence or fetch some external knowledge and do some uh, consistency checking. And these are uh, these can happen based on this well-calibrated confidences. So here is a, a general overview of the method that we propose in this work. Our uh, method uh, is named uh, Generalized Focal Loss Ensemble of Low-Rank uh, uh, network factor uh, low rank factorized networks which is a mouthful so you just refer to it as glen uh, our method consists of three parts to it so first we observe that uh, performing a low rank factorization to the final linear layer of the neural network helps with calibration and to those of you, if you do not not if you uh, don't have uh, enough background on this uh, low rank factorization, uh, it's just uh, the final layer of the neural network is a linear layer. So you uh, you 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 just take the weight of the final layer and do low rank factorization that is exp approximating the weight by product of two smaller matrices. Uh, and it, it has been shown that in uh, neural networks, actually the weights have uh, some low rank structure and for a very low uh, factorization rank that is low R, you can approximate the weight without harming the 
uh, accuracy of the model a lot. And we observed that this factorization on final layer specifically helps the calibration. Uh, but it comes with a cost of uh, some degradation in the, uh, in the calibration. Additionally, ensembling in literature has been used for calibration of the neural networks. And that, that is done by just uh, training different models and aggregating their final logit before applying the softmax and answering based on this, uh, this aggregated softmaxes. However, uh, direct ensembling the, is limited in uh, uh, improving the calibration. And it has been actually shown in the literature that it's more effective when uh, the different ensembled models are actually diverse. And in order to impose enforced diversity among uh, the ensembled models, we uh, propose generalized focal loss uh, which is a generalization of the uh, the uh, the standard uh, loss functions risk minimization, and it basically puts a weight to the individual losses. And through this weight distribution, which is controlled by some hyperparameter lambda, it puts more emphasis on uh, some. As, uh, on some input uh, examples, uh, let's say it puts more emphasis on some uh, some difficult uh, examples and less emphasis on other ones. And through that, it can uh, we can obtain more diverse uh, models. Uh, so in this slide, we. Uh, evaluated the effectness, effectiveness of the low rank factorization in the final layer. So the low rank factorization in the final layer just takes this uh, weight, uh, la the layer weight, and uh, approximates it with a product of two matrices. And that could be, uh, that that's actually equivalent if we have a sequence of two layers one, uh, the first layer uh, is a linear layer with one of the matrices, uh, the low rank factors, and uh, uh, followed by another linear layer uh, whose weight matrix is uh, the second factor in this low rank factorization. And you can actually observe that by doing this, actually we, we impose a compression on the intermediate, the final uh, features through this layer, we compress the feature and then classify based on those compressed features. And that was actually the intuition behind this applying low rank factorization on the final layer. So looking at the right hand side figures, we have shown for, for different uh, uh, so I should also mention that by doing this low rank factorization in the final weight, if you look at the sizes of the before, the original weight matrix and the the sizes of the uh, the U and V after low rank factorization, the size actually for low R, the size of the parameters in this layer reduces from M by C to M plus R, uh, M plus C by R, which can be much smaller than W. So by applying low rank factorization, we reduce the number of the parameters in the final layer. And for different uh, parameter reduction uh, percentages, we evaluated the calibration error, ECE, and the accuracy across four different VQA models. And for all of the four models, we observe that as the number of parameters reduce more, as uh, we go to the right-hand side of both figures, it's true that the accuracy drops, but also the ECE improves a lot. So if you look at the Clipfield VQA model, its original accuracy is close to 70 and original 
ECE is about 0 0.18. But with doing above 30% reduction in the final layer, we, we improved the, uh, the ECE from 0 0.18 to about 0 0.04, which is a huge reduction in the ECE, but only with about 1%, uh, about um, less than 3% drop in the accuracy. And that holds for uh, all models on vi visual BERT for about 40% Reduct drop in the parameter size, we improve the ECE from about 0 0.15 to 0 0.4, but with only less than 2% drop in the accuracy. So it's a huge gain on calibration, but with some degradation, very small amount of degradation in the accuracy. Uh, so this uh, figure uh, shows the ECE uh, versus the accuracy in four different cases. So let's look at the dashed blue lines, which are the, the ECE versus accuracy of uh, some original, uh, uh, some VQA models trained with the standard loss functions uh, in a low rank factorized form. They all pretty much perform same ECE. Their original EC is about uh, uh, something less than 0 0.15, which is this part of the uh, plots. And with uh, doing with uh, reducing the number of parameters, applying low rank factorization, their EC drops towards this side of the uh, figure, and accuracy also drops. The solid line, solid blue line, shows the ensemble of these three low rank factorized uh, VQA models. We can observe that uh, the ensemble models, ensemble, the ensemble of these standard VQAs, low rank factorized, actually improves the accuracy and also ECE a little bit. That is for, uh, for if you fix, uh, for fixed VQA accuracy, the ensemble of the low rank factorized VQAs uh, achieve lower ECE than the original ones. However, uh, if you compare the performance at this point, which is the original performance without low rank factorization of the VQA models with its associated uh, with this, this one, which is the uh, uh, performance of the ensembled model, but without low rank factorization, although there is an improvement in the accuracy, but the improvement in the ECE is not a lot from about maybe uh, 0 0.15 to 0 0.40. Uh, the dashed red, red line ones uh, show the performance of the low rank factorized VQA models, each of which is trained with the generalized focal loss. So we can observe actually the models are diverse. Some of them are uh, not uh, as well calibrated, but uh, have higher accuracy, which is the plot to the right, which has higher calibration error, but also higher accuracy. And the one to the left, which achieves, uh, which is the one that focuses more, puts more emphasis on the, uh, uh, on the challenging examples. It achieves lower accuracy, but also lower confidence. So this uh, solid red uh, plot shows the ensemble of these three, uh, three diverse. Uh, low rank factorized uh, models trained with the generalized focal loss. And you can observe that for given, uh, for the same accuracy, uh, it, it, it uh, achieves lower calibration error compared to just the uh, ensembling of the vanilla models. So we'd not, we not only maintain the accuracy with uh, compared to the baseline uh, VQAs, but also we improve the uh, 
the calibration error by a lot. Uh, here is uh, just uh, uh, showing how we uh, do in terms of the, the, the whole reliability diagram. The left-hand side is the reliability diagram of some big way backbone model uh, trained in a standard way, which has a high calibration error and is overconfident. And after applying our method, we, we kind of preserve the accuracy. The accuracy is just minimally degraded, uh, but the calibration error is uh, improved significantly. And we can observe that it has come closer to the uh, perfect calibration case. And let's look at the calibration of the, the reliability diagram of the subnetworks. So we ensemble three models uh, in this experiments. Uh, so if you look at the reliability diagram of each of these three distinct uh, uh, models, one is, so the, the one in the left-hand side is underconfident and the other two are overconfident and aggregation of the three models is actually what makes it calibrated. Uh, here is the uh, what we do in, uh, in how we perform in terms of the calibration error and also the overconfidence on four different VQA uh, architectures compared to the selector and the baseline, which baseline is actually the, the VQA model trained in a standard way. Across all four VQA architectures, the accuracy that we obtain is either uh, higher than the uh, compared methods, or it's uh, comparable in terms of this third architecture, Wilbert. But in terms of the calibration error and the overconfidence, we uh, do much better. We, Im we improve the calibration significantly, and uh, we also improve the overconfidence, that is the average confidence on the incorrect answer, which we can observe that the baseline and also the selector have a higher uh, overconfidence, but it's uh, improved uh, in our proposed method. Uh, additional to that, we also uh, uh, compared our proposed method with the baselines in terms of the abstention performances. That is, the area under that reliability figure uh, I showed in previous slides the risk coverage figure, uh, not the reliability. And we in, in this uh, in this evaluation, we uh, we evaluate the model's performance in terms of its coverage, the the uh, proportion of the uh, the questions that are answered uh, when the uh, the risk is. Uh, uh, limited to be less than 1% or 5% or etc. for different risk levels. Uh, in this uh, table, we can observe that not only we are as accurate, but also better calibrated than the baseline models, but we also perform uh, either best in terms of the abstention performances or uh, comparable to the selector in that model. In this plot, uh, the histogram of the confidences of the three uh, methods, the baseline selector and our proposed method on incorrect answers are plotted. So uh, for incorrect answers, we want the model to provide lower confidences. If you look at the baseline VQA, we observe a huge peak here at the high confidence spins, which means that the model answers a lot of the questions about uh, uh, more than 3,000 of the questions uh, incorrectly, but with a confidence that is uh, very close to one. As for the selector, it has uh, relieved this issue a little bit, 
but the confidences of the incorrect answers are kind of scattered in the interval of zero between one with some peak about in about 0 0.3 and 0 0.75. But if you look at our histogram of uh, confidences of incorrect answers, we have shifted majority of these, uh, the confidence of these uh, incorrect answer to the lower side of this confidence bins so that we actually have a peak in the lower uh, confidence area which means that we have improved this overconfidence issue uh, a lot compared to this uh, the two baselines. Here is some qualitative evaluation. Uh, on the left-hand side figure, which shows a case that all three methods provide a correct answer, uh, but our method is able to provide the answer with a higher confidence. Uh, but the main issue is if you look at the right-hand side figure where all of the three methods are, provide a wrong confidence. And actually the baseline provides, a, 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 all the three methods provide wrong answers. And the baseline provides a very high confidence for it's this wrong answer. The selector improves that a little bit, but it, it it's uh, the confidence is, is still 0.13. It's low enough, but our method can provide a lower confidence for that because we address the problem of the overconfidence and calibration specifically. Um, so in conclusion, uh, in this work, we address the problem of uh, reliability uh, in the VQA system, which is uh, an overlooked problem uh, in the research uh, domain. And we address this problem through calibrating the VQA models. And we observe that actually the VQA models trained in a standard way, they are poorly cal calibrated and overconfidence, which uh, is a problem that limits the trustworthiness of the VQA systems and their applicability in the real world applications, specifically the critical domains. And we propose our method uh, uh, which consisted of three parts, low-rank network factorization, assembling, and a novel loss function, generalized focal loss, which ensures diversity among the ensembled model. And we also showed through experiments that our method reduces the overconfidence in VQA systems, but, uh, and also uh, improves the calibration, uh, and, but also is as accurate as the baseline models. I also want to uh, thank my advisor, Dr. Chiu, and my collaborator, Hitesh Sapkoda, uh, which we collaborated on with, uh, with on this uh, project. Thank you so much. And I would be happy to answer your questions.